Oh, Cave Dweller. You know, I used to... First of all, I look like a nutcase with this hairdo. I have long hair, and um, it's cool and everything, but look at this. It's not that cool. It's not cool. It's not cool having long hair if you're a guy. It just looks dumb. And when... I don't like looking like a nut. Fly away. And... I want to look sophisticated, suave, like a dignitary from higher planes of imagination. That's what I am. I want to look like it. Cave Dweller. A lot of people talk about cacao right now. Almost as many people talk about cacao as there are people talking about psilocybin. And they talk about it as if it's a plant medicine, which it is a plant medicine, but no more than the items in your spice rack. Cave Dweller, I am drinking cacao because for some reason I'm into it. I'm not interested in hot chocolate or even chocolate. Really, I eat chocolate sometimes. I mean, I like it as much as anybody else, but I'm not crazy about it. And this cacao is called a plant medicine. It's one. That, it's included in the ceremonial plant medicines, which means it's somehow magical but it has no effect on me. People that drink cacao in cacao ceremonies, they talk about it being heart opening and they get full of love and stuff. And I just like, okay, it's unsweetened hot chocolate. You know, I guess that's cool. And what's the difference between cacao and cocoa? Nobody tells you that. The answer is that all the fats and things are left in the cacao. There's very little processing done to it if it's prepared correctly. This stuff that I made came out of a, a sack. It was a sack of powder, and it's just cocoa. It doesn't have the oily, dappled sheen on the top that ceremonial grade cacao does. So you could say cacao is full spectrum cocoa, and Hershey's bar is poison made from the cocoa. I had a Hershey's today, and an M&M's. And I am not proud of that, but there, I did it because I'm weak. They were just sitting there. There was a mini Mr. Good Bar and there was a mini peanut M&M's. And I'm like, whoa! I feel like, I mean, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like chamomile has more effect on me. My Uncle Henry found a little bird that had been thrown out of its nest somehow or a wounded wing. I don't know, this bird was sick. He took it in and he spoon fed it chamomile tea and it miraculously got better. It's easier to trade. Not everybody needs a cow. Not everybody needs a painting. But if somebody buys a painting from me, I can then take that money and buy a cow. But I don't notice that either. You know, I don't even notice the effects of caffeine until I don't have it. When I don't have caffeine, because I drink coffee every day, coffee, also a plant medicine, doesn't get the respect that cacao does. Let's do a coffee ceremony sometime, team. Because coffee is way more psychedelic, first of all. It's way more neurological. When I haven't had coffee in a day or two, I, get, I feel hopeless. I feel like it's the end of the world. No joy. All joy is gone. Coffee does not make me feel energetic or less tired. I don't even notice it at all, really. I don't even particularly like coffee. The only reason I get coffee every day is that I have an excuse to get out of the house and go somewhere and sit down and it putts around in a public space. I keep trying, Cave Dweller, to make coffee at home and just drink coffee at home, but it doesn't have, it, it loses the whole mystique, the whole idea of getting out of my house. I just, you know, don't make it. I buy it and then I think I'm going to save money by making it at home and I just don't. Because I'm not paying for the coffee, I'm paying for the environment. I was thinking today, Cave Dweller, during a work meeting, the pastor said, I'm going to institute uniforms. I'm like, oh, Christ. Uniforms, I realize today, are an existential threat to me because they're never cool. They're never awesome, like military uniforms or a police uniform from the 40s. Like even police don't get good uniforms anymore. They just look like your average best buy worker with a gun. And that's what I hate about them is that they're, they're dehumanizing. They make you look like a bag of trash. I'm going to have polo shirts in the summer and blah, blah. And I said, I'm against this idea of uniform. I couldn't abide by it when I was in college. I couldn't stand it when I was in graduate school. And there's no way in hell I'm ever going to look at it again. 
And we sort of left it at that. But they're a threat to me because I've been working my whole life trying to get some respect. So I was always enforcing these rules. My brother was always fighting against me enforcing the rules. And good for him. And my mom was always yelling at me for enforcing the rules that my brother was breaking. But my brother was never getting yelled at for breaking the rules. And he put me in a sack of shite like that. And already I have no respect. You're going to steal what little respect I have from me? You know, he said, I have a uniform. Well, his uniform is one of the few uniforms left on Earth that actually harnesses the effect of a uniform, which is to say it shows his authority and his respect, which is the same thing that a suit jacket does. But he has the collar. He doesn't need to wear the jacket. He automatically gets respect. He's got the collar. He has spiritual authority as well as social authority. The guy with paint all over his pants and work shoes, you know, maybe you'll trust him to fix your boiler, but that's it. He's got no other function in society, including brains.